How you doing? 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 How you Roy, are you good? Yes, sir. I'm good. You kind of left me. You want to turn your camera? You, you kind of sideways. <laughs> I don't know how to do this stuff. <laughs> You're doing better than I, me off. There you go. Okay. There, you there go. we go. Yeah. You doing well? 
Good. Listen, in, in the chat, can you see in the chat? I put kind of what our topic is. Nope, not yet. Gotcha. Hello, Mother Melinda. She on. I'm doing very well today. Good. I thought I was going to see you today, but my family, bless their heart. Did you see that? The topic is kingdom worshipers. Now, ever since last last um, September, ever since really last year, we've been turning the ship. Be and the goal that what it looks like is turning the ship. We want to be kingdom worshipers. And, and, and I'm stressing and I'm throwing this kind of out there because I want to hear what you're saying, what you're thinking when you're reading it. The father is not is not looking for verbs as it pertains to worship, but he's looking for nouns. And the question is, what is the difference? What does it mean to worship as a verb and or to worship as a noun? Mm. Mm. Based on all the teaching that we've been doing, I want you to pull it together and explain, are you a verb? Are you worshiping as a verb or are you wor are you worshiping as a noun? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I love it. <laughs> Well, Pastor, you ask, you, if you, you look at the, the definition of a verb and a noun, mm -hmm. a verb is an action verb. Right? Yeah. It's doing. A noun is person, place, or thing. Mm -hmm. So if you put it in that content, we, me, I, you talk about I'm a noun, mm -hmm. and I'm worshiping him, that is the verb, me worshiping him what I'm doing. Okay. I hear you. Is that your answer? Okay. Yeah. Huh? Okay. You're in the parking lot. You're not, you're not close to valet service, but you're in the parking lot. <laughs> okay. 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 At least I'm coming. Yep. That's right. Denise, I know you're thinking. I see it. I see the smoke coming out of your ears. Yes, sir. <laughs> Makes you want to run down the Stigney hot dog. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, uh, and in in coinciding with Claudia, uh, because um, a verb is an action word, God is not looking for um, our emotions or our feelings, even our opinions. Mm -hmm. um, but he's looking for He's looking for a heart. He's looking for our mind, a transformed mind, and 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 he's looking for us, total us. Okay, so so what are you? What is it? Believer. Okay, so disciple. Which one are you? I I I I'm not the verb. I tell you. I'm the noun. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You got up to valet parking. You got up to valet parking. Roy? Yes. Are you, do you do worship as a verb or do you do worship as a noun? Hmm. I say a little bit of both. A little bit of both. I'm putting I'm putting I'm putting more 
putting more thought into my worship and being there and trying to find the right words for it, but I can't. But it's before I didn't put thought into my worship. I didn't really put no energy into my worship. Okay. Now I put more energy in my worship. Okay. To feel his presence. Okay. So I say I'm I say right now I'm a verb. Verb. Okay. You you pull right on the side of Claudia. Okay. Laura. I'm sorry, Pastor um or Dad. Um I kind of like missed a little bit of it. It's in the so chat. it's in the chat. Do you do worship as a verb or do you do worship as a noun? As a noun, because it's just me and him. Go on, elaborate, because you may have made up to made it up to valet. Because when I will. When I'm worshiping him as a noun, it's just I, him, and me, and just um, making sure that I'm pleasing him while I'm doing it. Okay, I'm, I'm, you're missing. You, you bought a row from ballet. You was good on the way, but you was a row. There's, there's some points that are necessary. We're talking, Monique, did you hear me? Okay. So, uh, Sam, we're talking about, do you do worship as a verb or a noun? And if so, explain. Rose, you hear me? Mother Rose? Mother Rose? Not me. <laughs> Ooh, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Sounds like it, like it has a nice little ring to it. I, I thought you heard that. <laughs> I heard you. And I, I heard the question too, and I heard two answers so far. Or three answers. Claudia. Melinda, Melinda what you think? Are you do you do worship as a verb or worship as a noun? Before you do it, explain why you're doing that. I think that um i do worship as both because if i'm doing worship as a person place or thing mm -hmm. um, trying to um worship god then when i get done with my worship i need to go out and spread what i've learned to other people okay you know, Huh? Okay. Okay. You a row behind the valet. Yeah. Okay. Almost. Sam, what you think? Uh, I think she had it pretty close there. I worship him as a noun, but as I begin to worship, uh, there's some action that that as I begin to worship him, I think that's what we're talking about, sir. Worship God or the act of worship as I. As he pulls me in closer, I get more active in the process of worshiping him, and so I end up being, I end up being a, a verb because it's an ongoing. I, I get active. I keep worshiping my friend, but first I have to recognize, you know, who he is, and then as I begin to work and I recognize who he is, and what he's. Not just done, but who he is, period. It draws me to a place where I just kind of like, to me, really, I kind of like lose it. And uh, the tears flow. And and then I just want to become closer and closer and closer. And then the residue of that worship follows me into my regular life, into my everyday life where people can actually smell the presence or look at me and like, man, Something up with homeboy. He's smiling too, you know. So for me, I think it's a combination of both, sir. The active ingredient of, of the, the noun part of who he is. And it draws me to an act of worship. 
as I begin to reduce myself okay. in his presence. Okay, because you you keep bouncing between valet and about the third row. <laughs> <laughs> um, Monique, you didn't heard it. And, and Rose, I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that I'm definitely a now. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that because when you look at the definition, it also says action state or occurrence. But to me, it's part of hearing, becoming, and it's a it's a it's a state of happening. You're in the now. It's 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 a part, you becoming a part of something. So it's to me. I would definitely say that I am a now. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you get to I'm gonna let you get to the to the valet, but all of you all have done all of y'all did one thing. A part of worship is y'all should have saw y'all's faces and how y'all went to thinking. I mean, because you know how they talk about when you're trying to pull it in, you start looking up to the sky like this something gonna drop down. <laughs> Good, Rose. I didn't forget you. Well, did you, um, do we have a definition of verb and noun? I mean, according to worship yeah. or spiritual? Yeah, we verb? did. We did have that. And I missed it? No, but just use the words, you know, just look at worship and know what verb means and know what noun means. Yeah. What high school did you go to? Well, I'm from Jackson, Michigan. Oh, okay. I, I didn't go to Scott. <laughs> 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 if y'all don't leave Scott alone today. I, I think that was a great school, but <laughs> thank you. Oh goodness. Oh do I worship to me mm. to it's me when I worship, better. it seems like I'm trying to think like when I'm worshiping at home and I'm worshiping worshiping with a with church or the choir or in the, during the service, and it seems like the, like the corporate worship is more verb. So I feel like I'm more of a verb. Well, actually, I feel like a verb all the time. And how do I explain it? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's emotional. To me, the worship is worship is emotional. Okay. Um, and thankful, you know, when I think about how good God has been in my life, so that just makes me want to. Anytime, anywhere, and to me, that's worship, and that's to me, that's a verb. Okay. My action, acting out the way my heart feels. Okay, that's good. That's good. You can you you can be in the same row Sam is in. That's good. Uh, Ebony, do you do worship as a verb, or do you do worship as a noun? A action, a verb. Okay. Why you do it like that? Well, it's something that you do is something I'm po like performing, um, clapping, crying, praising. Okay. And the noun is where I choose to worship at my car, my house, the church, work. Okay. Okay. Okay, you next. You next to Sam now. You next to Sam now. Keith. I feel like um, I do verb because um, it just feels real mm -hmm. to act on it. Um, then like when you're in the presence of God, it just feels good. So. Okay, okay. As we all start off, we are all, we all started off with the understanding that worship is a verb. And, and technically, that's praise. When, when you get into move, everything else, bound down, all that, that's praise, and that is the verbal part of it. As a kingdom worshiper, it's who you are. Y'all were touching on pieces of it, but the key piece that you have to understand, you don't 
as a real worshiper, you don't come to the temple to get worship. You come to the temple because you are, are the worship. We have to get to a place in our hearts and our minds, get it clear that worship is the frame of mind you are. Not all that you do. We don't come to worship anymore. We understand I am worship. I am a person. If you look at in, Matt, in, in, in John 4, he said he's looking for, it, did it say that he's looking for shouters? No. Scholars, dancers. No. So he, he says that he's looking for true worship. worship. And all of you did the thing that worshipers do. You thought. I'm telling you, the look on y'all's face was, I'm thinking, what am I doing? And see, could you imagine what it would be like if we could get our church to come knowing they are the worship? They're the worshiper. Yes, Roy, that would bring the energy because we would be concentrating on him. And that's what I want us to understand. We don't come to 5301 Nebraska to have worship. We come to meet with worshipers. And that's the whole difference because it is a mind thing. It's a mind thing first that puts you into it. And that's what, the, that's what it says in, in, in our lesson today. As we start with John, I started with John. Remember, we started with on Sunday, we started with John 4.23. And in John 4.23, here, here's what we, we, we got together on and read this here. This here, this here is where that comes from. Right here. John 4.23, the international version. It says. It says, the time, yet now a time is coming and has now come. If you have your Bibles open or you taking notes or you got a part, you did, were able to pull the um, outline off the thing. You need, you need to underline has come. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in your Bible or something for us, technically, when, when Jesus met the lady at the well, he, he, he authenticated a time switch. We would call it daylight savings time. He sit there. He, he actually did a time switch. And But I want to use this date. If you would write down this date, that 2020, God pushed us to a time change because it was so significant in our lives. That, that he ordered a different type of manifestation of worship to him. He threw us out of the temple. He made us sit at home and regather our relationship with him. From 2000, late 2019, but I'm using 2020 for the relative for us so that we would understand. I know Tisa's the youngest one on here, but and she but she know about 2020. And that reality is the whole course of our relationship with God changed. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. We were challenged. To worship him in unfamiliar place called our home. Ain't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine folk not wanting to worship God in their home? You do know that during that time of that switch, we were as close to the first century church than we've ever been. Because that's where they started at. They went from where? House Acts 1, 2. 
it went from house to house. Mm -hmm. And so I call that's that's the evidence for me that God pushed us out of the temple, pushed us to our homes, and said, Meet me like you used to. Wow. And now all them people that came to church and said, I couldn't get into service because so-and-so was bothering me. He asked the question, what, what's, what's wrong with y'all now? Ain't nobody here but you and me, like y'all were saying. Ain't nobody here but you and me and your family. The people you're supposed to be primarily witnessing to anyway. Wow. You got to take communion, you got to eat and fellowship with him, and then you got the word, and you, you and yet we didn't understand he was reorientating our worship without the bells and the thrills. Man, he says that that's what that that under that, and then it says, and then it says, has come when God, when the true worshipers will worship the Father. In spirit and in truth. Now remember that in spirit is lowercase. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're not talking about the Holy Spirit. And it should not be, and it should not be that that the with a which is a definite article that says it comes before something. No, he's talking about in spirit, which is in mind. And what you here's what I loved. It just it was so you all went to thinking and you and your worship started. Anytime you go to thinking of how you can relate about God, that's a worship, y'all. As a kingdom worshiper, the first thing the kingdom noun worshiper must do is think. If I'm going to get to the Father. Here, here, let me, let me look at this point. Give you the, here's one of the, here, if we break it down. Now. Do it like this. Okay. When you look at. Now has come or now is the time for the manifestation of true worshipers. That's what that John 4, 23 means. Now is the time that God is looking for some real people. He's looking for real people who, 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 who want to look, who will worship. That's the focus. That the focus of the worshiper, of the true worshiper, is the Father. Do, do y'all realize what happened Sunday? Do, do you realize that the Father and his glory states, manifested itself in our presence? How did we get there? The worship team was singing nothing but things that pertain to the Father. And by the time Tanya got to, he's a wonder, my soul love him. Mm -hmm. And he's a wonder in my soul. Mm -hmm. And then, and then um, Courtney got up and danced about him. And then Mary, Mary, uh, Mary Williams, Mother Williams, got up and sang, "I'm trusting in God." Mm -hmm. It was ball game, y'all. Everything from 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 the worship all the way to the preaching was talking about nobody. The focus was nobody but the Father, and He just took over. I mean, could you imagine if we came in like that every Sunday? Recognizing my worship focus 
is the Father. I'm not looking at the praise team. They're here, but I ain't looking at them. I'm looking at, not looking at the pastor. I'm not looking at who's at the door. I'm not looking at nobody else. I came to see the Father. Woo. I keep telling y'all, when we, when we get into the habit of, of making the Father our whole center of worship, People will be sitting in the chair in their pews and get healed. I mean, doors will open and you're gonna see miracles taking place right in front of you because his presence ushered in. Look at okay, I, I'm sorry, I, I got caught up. Here, here, in spirit and in truth is the method for the transformation of the mind with facts, truth of who the Father is. Yeah. We, we have to change our mind. Our minds have to go through a process of where we understand we can't approach him like we used to. And that requires you thinking. That requires you moving some stuff out of the way. And that, that requires you to know something about the Father. Uh, Denise, Denise, can you give me um, Exodus um, 34 and 6? And, and help you to understand, I mean, the Lord, to worship him as the Lord, as to worship him and to tell him, you are all mine. And what I want you to do is, is get on one side of your hand, one side of your mind, get an issue that seems incurable. Just it's been wearing on you, it's been going with you, it's been messing your thinking up. And and when and then in the other hand, on the other side of your mind, I want you to say, But I got this issue, God. There's this thing going on, but but I'm not lift, I'm not gonna lift it up above you because you're almighty. You're El Shaddai. You, you are the gracious one, you are the compassionate one. Can we take a minute? And just 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 for a minute, and come off of mute. And go ahead, Denise. Read 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 who he is. And, and, and I need to grab one of those things. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, "The Lord, the Lord God, merciful." Okay, and the Lord is Almighty. The Lord God Almighty. He, he can nobody stand up to him. He's sovereign, y'all. And, and you have to stop and worship the fact that we serve a God who doesn't have to have a committee to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Bless his holy name, y'all. Yes, yes. We, we, we serve a God that, that like Job said, he, the Lord, Job was saying, Job said, you know, why you do this and why you do that? And so God said, well, Job, I want to ask you some questions. Who did I take counsel with when I decided on the circumference of the earth? Where were you when I told the sea and gave it its limits to roll up on the shore and then roll back into its bed? When I counted out the grains of sand, who, who counseled me to do that? Y'all, that's how great our God is. That's how El Shaddai is, the almighty creator. Man, go ahead. I'm, I'm not going to cut you off no more. Go ahead, finish it. The Lord God merciful and gracious, long-suffering and glad, you, I'm sorry. Ain't you glad? That, that after all we've been through, all the mess 
we have done thinking we being sneaky and only to get on the other side and realize he ain't mad. He ain't even, he's slowing. Wow. Gracious. Abounding in love. You, you can't, you can't, your hate can't out love him. <laughs> yeah. Here, the other is what is faithful. Tell me when he dropped you. Tell me when he didn't show up. I'm not talking about back in the Bible days. I'm talking about in your life. At a proud 65, I do not know when he has ever not showed up. But all them times that I thought he should have been, he was there, but not the way I thought he should have been. Faithful? Can we just stop and just praise him for mm -hmm. one of those attributes that, that he is? Yeah. Gotta, we I have think. to learn as worshipers Lord, when you think of what he, who he is, not what he's done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. 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 Thank and if we keep talking about who he is, he, there's a whole side of him we ain't seen. And in times like these, we need to know who God is. We need to worship and remind it of who he is. Yeah, and now, now, in kingdom worship, that's what that brings us to that point. But, here, but the, what makes the difference is the changing of our mind. And y'all already know, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep throwing it at y'all until y'all can say it backwards. Is is Romans 12, 1 and 2. Denise, you got that? Now I'm gonna tell you, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm gonna try to hold it and go through my order. But this tease, this, 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 this revelation. Been making me shout all day long, Ebony. I I couldn't wait to tell y'all this. Listen, go ahead. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, okay. by the mercy by the mercies of God. Okay, right there. Put underlying mercy of God. Mercy of God is. The special act that God did regarding the stupid choices we made. There's not a one of us on this screen or in Facebook or those on YouTube that at one point or another didn't do something that could have killed you. And, and after all the stuff we've been through, we ought to have residue. Because look, at he gave you some friends. He gave us friends who were doing the same thing we were doing, but they got worse. But his mercy came in. His mercy spoke to us. I need you to see that. Mercy came in and it, it helped us to understand. And see, every time I want to go off or I want to judge somebody, he, he pushed mercy up in my face and says, who are you? Every time I want to turn my nose up and think that I can, I can go off, he says, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold that breath while I run a flash of my mercy. 
regarding you. That's what Paul is saying. He says, we ought to serve with the object of God's mercy in front of us. I can't help it. I can't help it. I know he delivered me from some stuff. I know that he changed some stuff in my life that I should, by all rights, be dead by now. But by his mercy. Mm -hmm. And so when, when it's time for us to serve, mercy keeps us humble. That's what Paul has said. He says, what I want you to do is in view of the mercy. Go ahead, Denise. That you present your bodies uh -oh. a living sacrifice. Underline in your Bible, in your paper, living sacrifice. You should never have a clean Bible. It ought to be marked all up. <laughs> I know, T, she's talking about in my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mark it all up. All right there. Underline that part that says sacrifice. A sacrifice is the act of slaughtering an animal, a person, or surrendering a possession as an offering to God. And he says, I want you, in view of the mercy, to offer your bodies, our lives, everyday life, as a living sacrifice. When, when, here, let me put it like this. He says, if you offer yourself, if you can remember, and some of us don't understand, because it's hard to quit cussing. It is. I know y'all don't have to say nothing. Come on, come on, Claudia. Tell us. It's hard. It's Very hard. Very hard. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> when you can't do nothing else, you can get a cuss out. <laughs> but then when he when when he says, I need you to surrender that cuss up. Hmm. And I need you to quit cussing. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like the minute you decide you ain't going to do it, the very people that can provoke it cross your path. And you have to stand there and decide, am I going to honor God? Or, or, or I'm just going to have to ask for mercy. No. No. That hurts. That hurts. Anytime you have to render up your flesh of the act and the way you've handled things. When you get serious about it, it hurts like a sacrifice. It cuts. They were telling me about in the country how they used to kill pigs and, and they would take the pig and hang him up there, cut him right down the center, and, and then scrape everything out of him. Oh, that's what a sacrifice. And if what you're, if when you're offering, there's no twinge of hurt, I can't tell you that it's real. I, I, I think you, it's more of a repression that I can push it down but I can bring it up. And then God puts you, lets you get in situations where you thought you had brought it under control and somebody else crossed your path or that car cut you off and all of a sudden you back to saying something that you thought and then you're you going to question yourself like, where did that come from? No. No. Oh, oh yeah. I'm telling you. See, see, that's what he's asking you to do. He says, as you present your life with all the cutouts on, he know, I know it hurts. I know that it hurts. He said, it's, it, but see, what keeps you focused is holy. Underline holy. Under holy, ho holy, it, holy means dedicated to God, consecrated to God. And so he's saying, 
as I make this twinge, I'm doing it for you, God. Oh yeah, uh, we, we know how to make sacrifice. We have, you got children and there are certain things you did for them so things would be better. So it's not that we don't know how to do the sacrifice. He says, I need you to do this with me on your heart. Here is what's that last part? The, the, the last one, it says, it says, and pleasing to God. Pleasing means satisfied. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I, I want you dedicated. I want to be the single thought of what you're, while you're, not committing the sin while you're cutting it out of your life. I want you to do it with me in mind. Not only my mercy, but me, holy, consecrated to me and know that I'm satisfied by you. Because we know, the old church we used to sing, I'm, I'm satisfied with God. But the song is, is God. Satisfied with me, I know. I know y'all, 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 young folk don't remember that old that that old hymn. It said, "The question comes to where we need to ask: Is God satisfied with my last action, the way I handled today?" Oh, yes, yes. Here, now, here, here's the important part. Here it comes. Here it comes. Go ahead. And do not be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, so we are, this is where the challenge comes in. Because in church, whether we admit it or not, we, we, we know how to act like we conform between 9.30 and 11.30. We, we can put on our church face, our church look, and we can do the churchy stuff and, and don't realize we have conformed to the way the world worships God. Look at that. We, 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 we have a consciousness about what I need to hide or what I need to check, what I need to keep in place. I know, I know there were times I thought I was hiding and keeping, you know, I, because, and I'm just saying for me, because, you know, going and smoking and I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, so I, I would smoke by myself and that way, then, then spray all this cologne on and thinking that that's hiding something because it was in, when I, I knew what, what was acceptable in church. But then one day God spoke to me and said, okay, I'm tired of that now. And I had I had to get to a place that did I want to please him, or or did I want to try to get by? Mm. When I'm conformed to the world, I get by. Mm. But when my mind is changed, I want to please him. Oh, I want to please him. The cussing, the smoking, the drinking, oh, the acting crazy comfortable but then when he when your heart sticks to pleasing your mind changes I, I, I need you to see this because I want I don't want you to read it real fast because this is the this is the whole thing he says he says the pattern but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and you all I gotta get it into you that every time we meet, every time you open that word, every time we have cat, every time we go to a conference, we are in, should be in the process of renewing our mind. You got to add to the database. And, and, and after you get it, it'll start to change how you think. This is where, Monique, this is where, this is the part that got me. This is the part. This, Denise, go ahead and read that, but start with, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. Okay, here, here, here's what my, that, or, or listen, here's what my translation says. It says, then, 
that word then jumped out at me, I'm like, well, what do you mean? Hmm. If you follow directions on the GPS, what do they say? Go to the light, then turn right. Go up the street, then. Which means if I'm going to follow directions correctly, I can't turn till I get to the then. <laughs> oh, I got it. I want y'all to see this because he's saying transform by the renewing of your mind and the prize of renewing your mind is that you will be able to test. Now, if in, in grammar, you can say because there's an and, so they connect it, test, and approve. But you can say, then with a renewed mind, you will be able to know his will. Test what is the will of God. Can you see that? See, see, this whole point that I'm talking, Rose, what y'all got to see is why couldn't we do what we thought we could do only to realize we haven't changed our mind to take the test? Mm -hmm. What about God's word was so hard for you? Because we were still trying to do it with our natural mind, with the mind we grew up with. You argue with tithing or you argue with forgiving. You arguing with, with, with being selfish. He says, the argument ceases when you renew your mind. Because what he's saying is you're able to test the will of God. Yeah. He say, I want you to test what I'm saying. Now that your mind is changed, you have the authority to test his word. Hmm. Grab, I want you to grab it. because well, Here, let me put in this, this face like this so y'all can hear it. He, he said, prove me now. Test me. And see, won't I open the windows of heaven? He's saying, I dare you to take any part of my word and test it. Hmm. Go ahead. Test that you can love your enemies. Test it. And see, won't I take care of it? Call on me and see, won't I answer? That's his word. What 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 have you been going through? What have you been realizing, understanding that, that comes to a place in your walk with God that you come to grips with one thing? If God said it, and my mind, my transformed mind understands it, I have the ability to test it. This is Marilyn. This is going to really get you because he says, only with a reform, with a, with a retransformed mind will you be able to know what the will of God is. Oh yeah, see, see how many times have we we spent five and ten and 15, 20, 30 years trying to decide what's right and what's wrong, and he says the reason is that you haven't changed your mind to my to my word. So you would be able to uproot what the will is. Yeah. Once you've tested it, you're able to approve his will. Man, that's powerful, y'all. Here, here, let me put it like this. I don't know how many of y'all were raised up in, in, in the Pentecostal church. And the mothers would get you on the altar. And you'd have to pray. And sometimes you be trying to fake them out. 
and 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 just say, you know, he come on a Honda, thinking that it's gonna be okay, or or he come in a Chevrolet, you know, maybe they'd be done like many things, and they would look at you like you better get back down there and stay there until he worked with you. Why? Because they can look at you and approve the stand. No, you ain't got it. And there's some people in your circle that God has placed in your circle because you have tested his word that they are now at a trying state where you, 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 you need to tell them, no, you ain't got it yet. It ain't there. Or when he's trying to tell you to go somewhere, you start understanding it is that his will is good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. You don't have to spend 90 years trying to figure out if the will of God is good. Not with a transformed mind. Not with a mind that has been changed by his word. Oh, man. I'm telling you, this blessed me so today, I, I could I, I would say it one more time and have 11 o'clock one. So 11 o'clock tonight to still tell somebody. The power you have with a transformed mind. The mind that he says that is according to his word, it allows you to go through to test God at every word he said. See, won't I? Go ahead. Go ahead. Declare to me that, 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 that you're going to wait on me. Test me while you wait. I said, if they that wait, See, won't I? Mount you up with wings and eagles. See, won't I? Man, make you strong. Go ahead. Walk through the fire with me in mind. See, won't I bring you up? For my sake, my name is on you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, trying to get you to see it. My time is running. I, I ain't even got through the introduction yet. Trying to get through. <laughs> I, 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 the power of the transformed mind is your peace, is your authority, and and I can venture to say whatever you're struggling with, I guarantee you, it's a part of words of God's word you've never tested. He, he he's so he's so confident that his word will work. He'll let you take his word and use it to prove to you it works. You, you see on them people on TV, they be having all these products and they're talking, you gotta listen to the you, you gotta um pay something, but but if you don't like it, then they'll give you the money back. God said, all I need is your faith and you to change your mind and I promise you, you won't give it back. Oh, man. Monique, can't you see that? A he, he says, your mind is so transformed until it'll help you get through the test. And you can label the test. Ebony, you see me? You hear me? Yeah, I want y'all to teach. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Because there's some things that is worrying you. And they're part of God's word to help change your thinking. When you hear me say, I'm, I'm praying that God blow your mind. I'm praying that something happens so powerful that you'll take his word and stand on it. Because you do know he's working on a God-only miracle for you. Everybody has got to have a miracle in their life that helps them understand, that changes their whole position before the Father. Everybody got to have one of them days that he sure enough shows up himself and convinces you I am who I say I am. Hallelujah. Have one. Have you had one? Have you have you had one lately where he really 
I'll let you know. I've had one. I mean, I've had situations where, where, where I'm in a place that it wasn't what I asked him to be or where I wanted to be. And he said, he said, he says to me, didn't I tell you I wouldn't leave? Now test me and see. And every day, guess what? I get up, guess who's there? He's right there. He's right there. I'm telling you, th this is the thing. That I want y'all to think about this until we meet again on Sunday to, to the understanding that the trials you're going through, could it be because he is really about testing you to change your mind concerning that very thing? Stop thinking like we thought as we were growing up. But take it at his word. Love your enemy. If your enemy asks for, asks for your vest, give him your overcoat too. Woo, that's a lot. <laughs> no, it ain't. Not with a transformed mind. I've seen him time. He'd be glad if I spoke to him, let alone give him something. <laughs> but it's changed, y'all. No. You're always borrowing from me. Oh, here, hold on. Let me just, let's do this right. Make sure. Why? Because he said, if one asked, borrow. You're using wisdom the changed mind, the transformed mind, because our Father, we are always asking our Father for stuff. Don't he give it to you? Yeah, even sometimes he gives it to us to prove to us we didn't need it. That's his holy hand. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you smile, Rose. I saw you smile. Something went across your mind. Yeah. Ain't he wonderful, y'all? Yes. He yes. could have a change. Yes. That's what the old folks would say. I know I've been changed. I know my mind is transformed. How you know? Because the angels in heaven have signed my name. I don't walk like I used to walk. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't go where I used to go. I don't handle mm. things. No, I've been changed, y'all. <laughs> oh, on the inside. So when your test comes up tomorrow, and he, he, he honestly says, are you going to remember what you were taught? Or are you going to go back to what you're comfortable with? Man, I'm telling you, because he puts us in situations. I, I, don't, I can't remember the last situation he put me in that I was comfortable I know some of y'all, y'all holy and righteous and got it going on. And so everything that comes in front of y'all, y'all are always comfortable. I can't tell you that. <laughs> y'all be like, oh, God, thank you. I just bless you for letting me get here. I, I'm sorry. I'll be going through like, Lord, we need to talk. But then I come back to it. I'm like, well, okay, you got this. Bless his name. Man. He is God. And he got your back. He got he he has your future. Okay, okay, in the last few minutes, tell me what you heard. Tell me what you heard. As a kingdom worshiper, what'd you hear? Well, Dad, I learned that um I am the worshiper. I am the worship. And when I come in that I, my focus is, and my intent and even before I get into the door is him mm -hmm. seeking him and only him and, and to leave the distractions out of the way. As I pursue him and I seek him, there is a transformation of heart. And, and only then when my I'm transformed in my perception and my heart is transformed into, into the way he wants me to be. 
-hmm. Only then, hallelujah, I will be able to know what his will is for my life. And then not only know his will, but I can trust trust him at his word, stand on his word, and, um, and know no matter what comes my way, that he is with me, that he's got me. And I've been through some show sure enough challenge and experience. Oh, hallelujah. I've been through, I'm a miracle right now. I'm telling you right now. And I know it was nobody but God and you got to know it. And yes. what happens, pastor, he prepares me for the next challenge that I go through that I cause, I know what he did and what knowing for myself. The next time I get another uh, challenge, I know that God is eight. Well, see, and that's what you got to keep doing is that, see, y'all keep thinking it just happened in church. But you're the worshiper. You, you are the thermostat, not, not the thermometer. A kingdom worship is, is a thermometer, is a, is a thermostat. You set the gauge. You the salt. You the flavor. You the light. So, so when you walk in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Glory. Glory. <sighs> Yes. When you walk in, you change the whole atmosphere because you're a kingdom worshiper. Nothing yes. on the exterior can ever, ever hinder you. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to close. Somebody else? Hi there. How are you, Tony? You're on mute. Oh, we, 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 Hello, we... let me unmute. I said I'm good, but <laughs> as you were teaching, the scripture came to mind that it's no longer I that live, that, but him mm -hmm. that lives through me. Yes. Yeah. That's only realized as my mind is transformed. There you go. That's mm -hmm. what I there got. Go. That's what yeah. I got tonight. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Monique, what you think? What you hear? Well, it hit me toward the end when you said that the struggle that you're going through is because of it's a part of God that you haven't utilized yet. Mm -hmm. And it let me know that I thought that I knew all sides of God and knew what to do. But God is being who he is. I, I underestimated his size, how many sides he really has. And mm -hmm. I have to learn to dig deeper than what I've been digging because there's so much more that I don't know. Until yeah. I can jump up and pull the sky down, until I can mm -hmm. jump up and pull the sky down, mm -hmm. I got a whole lot to learn. Yeah. And I, I will never feel comfortable to the place that I got it under. Every time I think I got it, he has to prove to me that I don't. Yeah, he you got that right. He does, but that's because we're his. Mm -hmm. He's what you think? What you hear? Um, I got that it's okay to feel uncomfortable because then you're being challenged by God. So you just have to have faith in him and trust him that he will provide for you. Ah, you got it. Because that's 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 Matthew 5 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit in spirit. Those are the uncomfortable because they can't use their own mind. Holly, welcome to the group. Girl, you made it. <laughs> I have to let you up off the altar. You got it. You got it. <laughs> ah. Sam. Um, I'm gonna touch and agree with uh Monique and, and, and what she said that quit trying to make adjustments and just just let go and let God always trying to make an adjustments and it's been an issue ongoing no matter how I think I've done it this way I always find another way to make another adjustment and and those adjustments are out of my out of my control thank you father for this lesson I am that law. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Rose, what'd you hear? So I'm, I'm thinking about transformation. And um, I remember back in the day when Mother Dolly and I used to walk down to Bible study. And I was in a certain lifestyle. And I, 
your teaching changed my life. That transformation, mm -hmm. but it is always another transformation. It, I mean, it's just like always. There always there's always some for us to work on for me to work on. Yes, you know, you think you've accomplished this, you know, doing a little bit better here and there, and then like you said, tests will come up, and yeah. and you, oh Lord, no, I didn't do that again. I didn't say that again or whatever. So transformation is just like I know we'll be transformed until we take our last breath. That's what the word says, right? Right. There's we always something to work but, on. So but, you know, I don't think you know what you said. What did I say? You, you, what you understand <laughs> is that the previous transformation in your mind help you to understand the next transformation. That sure is true. Yeah. I mean, that, I didn't, I didn't, yep. that, that is parenthood right there because people think and all of us that keep thinking all of us sam all of us Dwayne, we keep thinking we can get to a place that we can master this thing and then god mm. says no mm -hmm. that's so, i mean here, I, all of you all have when, when we said when we said we're gonna have worship at 9 15. oh man and that's <laughs> A little thing. Oh, don't here, here, don't let me have communion. And then the Lord said, Don't serve it. Everybody, communion, communion. This is what you said. And guys, they missed the fact that God said, I, I don't need it today. Ooh. He's always, we have to yield to transformation. Yield. Roy, you want to say something? Yield. What I heard for me is renewing your mind so you can hear God and then your worship is heard even more because we are the worship. Yes. That's what I that's what I heard. Yes. And see, he's transforming you because every area of your life, y'all, every area of your life is an area that constitutes worship. Before the Father. Hey, there ain't nothing left out. Uh, what did I say? Somebody asked me to say something about the heart. What did I say? I can I didn't catch all of it, but you was talking about the heart and when your heart is something. You said, Pastor, when your heart seeks to please him. Right. Your mind is then cha changed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. When your heart seeks to, when you get into your, get to the fact that your, the, the core of your emotion, and that, that's where that, that tear comes from. That's where you stop living on the, on the, on the surrender mode. Surrender mode. Remember, I keep telling you, when we surrender, we, we will admit I've been captured. Okay, I know. But while the whole time we have our hands tied with stuff that we ain't ready to give to him. And so we're negotiating with God, telling God, well, listen, Father, I'm going to serve you. But, but you know, I got to you got to put up with this. I still got this. Uh, it's like the, what that, that, that story about the, 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 the poker player. He got baptized, and the pastor kept trying to put him in the water, and he put him in the water, but he kept this hand up, and they kept putting him in and kept that hand up. And so the pastor said, what is wrong? He said, I'm giving everything to God, but this is my poker hand. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> All of Good us, one. We, we, we're in that negotiation stage, but, but there comes a time when your heart gets so real, that you go for broke. Oh yeah, he starts to change your mind and all of a sudden, guess what? What happens is you submit. Can you imagine yourself be a place that he'll tell you, I need you to do this. And all you say is yes, Lord. That's submitted. You don't try to intermix your mixture. You don't try to fix stuff up in it. You, you, you just say, that if this is gonna please if this is gonna please you, I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry, and we, we over time, we over time. And Tony, I'm so good, glad to see you. Would you close us out in prayer? I'm just so glad to see you. I'm glad to be seen. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Father. We just thank you tonight. 
Hallelujah for the transparency of this word, Father God, and the power in which it was given unto us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that it shall not return unto you void, Lord God, but it has permeated our hearts, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that we receive it and we act upon it, Father God. We take it, Father God, and we live it, Lord God. We are going to prove you now, Lord God, because that's what you told us to do in your word. And God, we give you glory for this period of transformation, God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the, the squeezing, the tightness, the uncomfortable comfortableness, God. We just give you glory, God, because it's all working out for our good and your yes. glory. So just go ahead, God, and yes. do whatever you need to do. We yes. Hallelujah, Lord God. Yes. Thank you for this time of teaching. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you all. Um, I, I, I'll take the blame for being over 10 minutes. I'll take the blame. I mean, I, the last three minutes was Tony's prayer, but I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it. I love you all so much. Love you, much. Love you too, Pastor. Love you. Love you. Yes, love you. yes, Lord. Hang in Thank there. you, Father. Amen. Thank That's you. where you go. Word Come on. Yo, you the Everywhere worship. we go. Love yeah. you all. God bless you all. Life's God bless all of you. Bless you. Love you much. <laughs>